Here are the exercises for lesson 1.2, which is introduction to functions. You see them listed here. These are the exercises I will work from OpenStax Precalculus 2E. And um, I recommend you try them first and then come back and watch this video where I work the problems. Let's begin. Here we have a function P of C, which is C squared plus C. Here the independent variable is C, it's fine. Remember, it's just a letter. We wanna evaluate the function and also solve P of C equals two. We begin with A, we evaluate P of minus three. This is minus three squared um, plus negative three. Minus three squared is nine. So we have nine minus three. This is six. Now for letter B, we want to solve P of C equals two. So we set two equal to P of C and find C. Typically, if we have quadratic on one side, we want to set it equal to zero so we can factor. So let's do this. We can subtract two from both sides. The question is, how does this factor? Well, I need two numbers that multiply to negative two and add to one. So how about positive two and negative one? Positive two and negative one. Now let's check. Multiply, we get negative two. Add, we get positive one. So we have factored correctly. But now you see we can just solve for C. Um, we have, this equal to zero. And um, that means either C plus two is zero or C minus one is zero. And we get C is one. And we also get C is negative two. So here's my answer in letter B and my answer in letter A. Now move on to number 38. It's very similar, we just have a different function. First, we want to evaluate um, at seven, where our function is the square root of x plus two. So we have the square root of seven plus two, which is nine. Square root of nine is three. This was evaluating my function. Now letter B, we want to solve f of x equals four. So we just set, similar as we did before, we set my function equal to four. Try to solve for x. This is a little different. This is not a quadratic, it's a square root function. So how would we solve here? Well, you note know that I could just square both sides. So if the square root of x plus two is four, this would say that x plus two is four squared, which is 16. Now I'm almost there. I can just subtract two from each side. So X is 16 minus two, which is 14. Wonderful questions. We get to look at a graph and do the same thing we just did on the last two, except we're doing it from the graph. So 53, letter A, we want to evaluate F of zero. Here's the point on the graph. The point on the graph is zero comma one. And so this tells us that F of zero equals one. Now we move on to letter B. We wanna solve F of X equals negative three. Now remember what we did in the last two, we set the function equal to that value solve for X. Graphically, well, we're looking at Y equals minus three, which is here and then we want the X values. And you see there are two X values, well, two points on the graph where Y equals negative three. And so there's two X values. You can see them just moving up here. Maybe I'll put the points on the graph. This is two comma negative three, and this is minus two comma negative three. So my answer in letter B is negative two and two. 54 is very similar. We just have a different function. Okay, first one, evaluate f of four. 
there's the point on the graph and we can see it with the tick marks it's four comma negative three this is four comma negative three and so letter a this tells us f of four is negative three letter b we want to solve f of x equals one so let's draw our horizontal line y equals one and you note that this intersects the graph at two points here and here and let's write them this point is zero comma one and the other point is negative six comma one negative six comma one and so we have our two x values negative six and zero we move on we have a domain question and there's three parts we want to find the domain of each function write it in interval notation we practice this a little bit in the lesson so let's recall what we cannot do we cannot divide by zero we cannot take the square root or really an even if root of a negative number okay let's begin the first problem you notice we see a square root here so what we need is what's underneath the square root to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, I could just add two X to both sides. I get that two X must be less than or equal to six. And now I can just divide by two. If you divide by a positive number, it doesn't change the way the inequality goes. So this, it says x is less than or equal to three. Let's write this in interval notation. We go from minus infinity up to three, and this is closed. And if it helps you, you can write it the other way, x less than or equal to three. Sometimes it's easier to see with the x here rather than on this side of the inequality, but those are saying the same thing. Number 13, this is fundamentally different than number nine, even though we see a radical. Cube root and square root are very different when it comes to domains because, okay, the cube root of negative one is negative one. Why is that true? Well, minus one cubed is minus one. On the other hand, square root of negative one, this is not a real number. does not exist. And that's what makes square root and cube root different when it comes to domains. So the cube root of x, maybe I'll put this as my comment before I write my domain. The cube root of x is defined on all real numbers. Now, in particular, if we have the cube root of x minus one, this is also defined for all real numbers. And so its domain is minus infinity to infinity. Now the final one, number 16, we have, oh, <laughs> we have two things going on. This is going to be exciting. We have to treat the two different things and make sure the entire function is defined wherever I write down. So the first thing to think about is the denominator. We need x minus four, not equal to zero when we can just add four to both sides this would say we need x is not equal to four and then we don't have to worry about dividing by zero but you see we also have a square root we also need what's underneath the square root maybe i will highlight it as i did above what's underneath the square root must be greater than or equal to zero greater than or equal to zero. And this would say x is, we just subtract four from both sides. So how are we gonna write this in interval notation? If you want, you can first draw a number line. This is what I recommend anytime you're unsure how to write your final answer and interval notation. So what do we want here? Well, we want included at minus four, and here's four, and we do not want to include this one. 
Okay. Now we can shade in everything else we do want. We want all of this bigger than or equal to minus four, but not including four. So this is what we want here. Now let's write it in interval notation. You see, it's gonna be the union of two intervals. My answer is closed minus four to four, open union four to infinity. That is what we see below in my number line. And this is my final answer. That was a great example. Now the last two questions are evaluating piecewise defined functions. And we practiced this some in the lesson, but it's great to practice more in these exercises. So for each one, 49 and 51, we wanna evaluate f of minus one, f of zero, f of two, and f of four. Now we have to think about this piecewise definition. So here, if x is less than zero, the function is seven x plus three. And if x is greater than or equal to zero, the function is seven x plus six. Well, this is the only one in this interval where x is negative. Let us evaluate f at minus one. We get seven times minus one plus three. This is negative seven plus three. We get negative four. The other three, zero, two, and four are in the other interval. F of zero, we use here. This is just zero plus six, which is six. Now we have two more. F of two, this is seven times two plus six. This is 14 plus six, which is 20. And the last one we want for this function is we want f of four. This is seven times four plus six, which is 28 plus six. f of four is 34. The next function in 51, we have three intervals. Okay. First, if x is negative, the function is 5x. And f of minus one will have this function definition. So this will be five times minus one, which is negative five. Minus one is negative. Then if x is in the closed interval from zero to three, the function is constant. It's just y equals three. And zero and two are both here. So here the function is constant at three. Now, finally, um, four is here, bigger than three, and f of four would be four squared, which is 16. And so here are our four evaluations of this function in number 51. I hope this was helpful for you to work through these exercises. Thank you so much.